Okay, we go to the five transporting points, the actions from the classics. <laughs> According to the Classics of Difficulties, Chapter 68 of the Classic of Difficulties deals with the use of <clears throat> five transporting points and gives guidelines which are still valid and widely followed today. Well points is used for the fullness under the heart. The string points naman is used for hot sensation of the body. The string points is used for feeling of heaviness and joint pain. The river points is used for breathlessness, calf, and hot and cold sensations. While the C points is used for rebellious, chi, and diarrhea. The five transporting points. First, all five transporting points are situated between the fingers and elbows and toes and knees. Number two, the five transporting points are related to each of the five elements. The section of channel where the five transporting points are situated is like a river starting at the fingers and toes and ending at the elbows and knees. There is a progression of depth and size of channels from the fingers and toes to elbows, knees, uh, that is the thinnest and most superficial at the fingers, toes, and thickest and deepest at the elbows or knees. The number five, the channel changes polarity at the fingers and toes, that is from yin to yang and vice versa. The change in polarity and superficiality of the channel at the extremities accounts for the particularly dynamic actions of the points at the fingertips and toes. The five transporting points are called well, the jing, spring, the ying, stream, the shu, the river, jing, and the sea, the hair. Number eight, the first point, which is the well, has a centrifugal movement and the Last point, the C point is centripetal one. First, we discuss uh, with the well points. The well points are used for ir irritability, mental restlessness, and anxiety. This applies to both yin and yang channels. The well points have particularly strong effect on the mental state and quickly change the mood. Like, for example, on well points <clears throat> used in this way, are PC9 for irritability, insomnia, the heart 9 for mental disorder, anxiety, manic depression, and the spleen 1 for hysteria and insomnia, stomach 45 for insomnia, mental confusion, and the kidney 1 for anxiety. The spring points or the jing are used for the fibril diseases or to clear heat. The spring points are very widely used to clear heat and practically all of them do. It is important to note that their heat clearing action is irrespective of their five element character. For example, heart eight is a fire point and stomach 44 is a water point, but they both clear the heat by virtue of being the spring points. Virtually, all the spring points clear heat in their respective channel and organ. Examples of widely used points are the heart 8, PC8 to drain heart fire, liver 2 to drain liver fire, stomach 44 to clear stomach heat, kidney 2 to clear kidney empty heat, lung 10 to clear lung heat, or to expel wind breath. Next, these three points are used for painful obstruction syndrome or the B syndrome, especially if from dampness. This applies to young channels more than the yin ones. Example are large intestine 3, 
triple burner tree, small intestine tree, for painful obstruction syndrome of the fingers, and stomach 43 for the toes. These points can be used not only as a local point for painful obstruction syndrome of fingers and toes, but also a distal point to clear wind and dampness from the channels. For example, stomach 43 is an important distal point to clear wind, dampness, and heat from the channels. Um, small intestine 3, the triple burner 3, and LI3 can all be used as distal points to clear obstruction from dampness and cold from the respective channels. Next, the river points are used for cough, asthma, and upper respiratory diseases. This applies more to yin than yang channels. And among the yang channels, it applies more to the bright yang channels. For example, we have the lung A for cough and asthma, spleen 5 for dry cough, stomach 41, and LI5 for sore throat of an excess nature, and the river point uh, PC5 is used for hot and cold sensations. Next, the C points are used for all stomach and intestine, intestinal diseases. This applies mostly to young channels but also to yin ones. Obviously, examples of C points of young channels treating stomach and intestinal problems are stomach 36, GB34, and uh, the C points of the yin channels of the leg also treat problems of the young organs as spleen 9. Kidney 10 and liver 8 can all clear dump heat in the bladder or intestine. Finally, the C points of the pericardium channel, the PC3, can also clear heat in the intestine. Other digestive indication of the C points are indicated below in the section on chapter 44 of the spiritual axis. In addition to the C points, the young channels of the arm also have a so-called lower C point. These are stomach 37 for the large intestine, stomach 39 for their 13 triple burner. These three points are directly connected to their respective organs and function like C points. That is, they treat problems of the young organ. In particular, stomach 37 is used for chronic diarrhea and damp heat of the large intestine, stomach 39 for intestinal pain, and bladder 39 for enuresis if reinforced uh, when the lower burner is deficient, or retention of urine and edema if reduced when the lower burner is in excess. The spiritual axis deals with the use of bladder 39 in chapter 2, um, bladder 39 receives the lower burner. If it is in excess, there is retention of urine. If it is deficient, there is enuresis or incontinence. Then the point is to be reduced in the former case and reinforced in the latter. The spiritual axis lists all the C points in chapter 4 and gives stomach 37 for the large intestine, stomach 39 for small intestine, and bladder 39 for the triple burner. These three points therefore function as C points for the large intestine, small intestine, and triple burner and their upper C points. Large intestine 11, small intestine 8, and triple burner 10. Mostly three channel problems of the neck shoulder and face, but not exclusively. The young, the young channels of the arm, the small intestine, large intestine, and triple burner have two sets of C points. First, the upper C points, small intestine 8, 
LI11 TV10 used mostly for problems of the neck, shoulder, face, and head. Number two, the lower C points, stomach 39, stomach 37, and bladder 39 are used mostly for problems of the relevant organs, small intestine, large intestine, bladder, and triple burner. Thank you for your attention. Let's discuss source points and uh, their relationship to Sanjiao. The first acupuncture point cited in the inner classic are what we now call the source points. Discussed in the first lines of the divine pivot, source points have likely been used for nearly two millennia. A passage in chapter 66 of the Classic of Difficulties says that they can be used whenever there is disease in the yin and yang organs. While their application has been refined over the centuries, they are nevertheless still used in the treatment of wide variety of disease patterns. So for the lung, we have lung nine, a source point, spleen, spleen three, heart, heart seven, kidney, kidney three, pericardium seven, liver three, LI four, stomach 42, SI4, bladder 64, triple burner 4, and finally the gallbladder 40 for the gallbladder. Other chapters of the inner classic describe the relationship of the triple burner organ to source chi. The use of the same term to describe the type of chi associated with the triple burner as well as the name for this important points on each of the 12 regular channels is significant. This is highlighted in chapter 66 of the Classic of Difficulties, where a list of the 12 source points is followed by a description of the role of the triple burner. The text says that the source chi moving in the triple burner arises from the fire at the gate of vitality in the kidney, the Mingmen fire and that the source points are associated in particular with this type of chi in the channels. Thus, the source points are related to the triple burner function of irrigating the channels with fire from the gate of vitality. In modern texts, one often reads that the source points connect with the triple burner and are used clinically to increase the circulation of source chi in the 12 channels. But how exactly does this happen? For example, how can a point like kidney three on the leg be related to the functions of a channel like the triple burner, which passes through the arm and to the three burners of the trunk? The first step in answering this question is to return to the concept of the triple burner organ. There, the triple burner was broadly defined to include the movement of fluids through empty spaces outside the vascular system, which is beyond the level of capillary circulation. These interstitial spaces are found throughout the body around muscles, joints, and bones. Therefore, the ability of source points to access source chi arises not from direct connections to the tribal burner channel, but from the pervasive presence of the triple burner organ in the fluids that suffuse the connecting tissues of the entire body. Each of the 12 channels represents a circuit of fluid movement along a definable course of muscles, nerves, and vessels that has a particular relationship to one or another of the internal organs. Therefore, when one thinks, for example, of the pathway of the spleen channel, it might be helpful to think of that channel as being part of the triple burner system that has a particular relationship to the spleen. Remember that the triple burner is described as an environment that surrounds the organs and other tissues of the body. The relationship of the acupuncture points to the triple burner is also described in chapter 66 of the Classic of Difficulties where it says that the points of the five yin organs are places where the movements within the triple burner pause in their chi flow. 
As many texts point out, the source points are found around the wrist and ankle joint. As many texts point out, the source points are found around the wrist and ankle joints. The range of motion and the sheer frequency of movement in these small joints are among the greatest in the body. The movement of the ankles and the myriad fine motor adjustments of the wrist and hand coordinate the acts of walking, balancing, grasping, gesturing, and lifting. This requires a great deal of chi and blood. In modern physiology, these areas are described as having a high rate of cellular metabolism, hence the warmth of the hands and feet. When there is a lack of abundant chi and blood in the body, these areas are often the first to feel cold or exhibit obvious changes due to compromised circulation. The locations of the 12 source points are found in the heart of these areas of increased chi transformation. One might also note that the source points are located in areas very close to the most distal palpable pulse on each of the 12 regular channels. This is not an accident. It is precisely because of the heightened chi and blood circulation at these points that they have a particularly strong need for source chi. While movement of larger joints like the shoulder and hip may require higher volumes of chi and blood, there is a unique circulation around the wrists and the ankles, which creates a particular environment that gives rise to the source points. So let's take a look at uh, the location of the source points. Okay. The source points are actually located in areas where there is a high degree of precise motility in the human body. And uh, these areas undergo a high turnover of chi and blood. So uh, we have here the homunculus, which exaggerates those areas of the body where there is a higher degree of uh, nerve and blood concentration. And many of the source points can be found at the borders of these more vascularized and innervated areas. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Continuing our discussion on the connecting points, today we discuss the use of the connecting points in conjunction with the source points. Um, since each connecting channel joins with its interiorly exteriorly related channel, example, the lungs in the large intestine, the connecting point can treat not only the channel to which it belongs, but it belongs uh, to which it belongs, but also to its interiorly exteriorly related channel. In other words, when we use lung seven, we affect not only the lung channel, but also the large intestine channel. In fact, in this example, it is precisely for this reason that lung seven affects the head and face, and that is through the large intestine channel. In fact, the connecting channel that departs from lung seven goes to the thinner eminence, and this could not explain the effect of this point on the head. When a source point is used to tonify a given channel or organ, the connecting point of its interiorly, exteriorly related channel can be used to strengthen the treatment. The connecting point is thus chosen as a secondary point to reinforce the action of the source point, chosen as the main point to treat the primarily affected channel. For example, in case of lung chi deficiency, we may choose to use lung channel source point, that is lung 9, and reinforce its action by using the connecting point of its interiorly, exteriorly related channel, which is LI6. 
this technique finds its rational in the pathway of the connecting channels as these join up with their interiorly exteriorly related channels. This is also reflected in the fact that the symptomatology of each connecting channel often includes symptoms of its interiorly exteriorly related channel. The Great Compendium of Acupuncture by Zhen Chu Da Cheng of 1601 discusses the combination of source point with associated connecting point and calls this combination the guest host method, the source point being the hosts and the low point, the guest. It should be noted that the source point is the main point that is, the choice of point is determined by the pathology of the host, that is the source point of the diseased channel. The symptoms are as follows, listing the, the host, which is the source point first, and guess the connecting point second. So here we have uh, some examples. Um, lung 9 and lung NLI6 can be used for um, conditions where there is a feeling of oppression on the chest, hot palms, cough, swelling of the throat, dry throat, sweating, shoulder pain, pain in the breast, expectoration of phlegm, and breathlessness. LI4 together with lung 7 can be used for toothache, swollen gums, yellow eyes, dry mouth, runny nose, epistaxis, swollen throat, and shoulder pain. Spleen 3 with stomach 40 can be used to treat stiff tongue, acid reflux, vomiting, abdominal distension, feeling of heaviness, constipation, weakness, and swelling of lower limbs. Stomach 42 and spleen 4 can be used to treat abdominal distension and fullness, a feeling of oppression of the chest, epistaxis, phlegm, foot pain, and ankle pain. Heart 7 and SI7 can be used to treat heart pain, dry throat, Thirst, yellow eyes, dry mouth, hot palms, palpitations, vomiting of blood, and fright. SI4 and heart 5 can be used to treat stiff neck, swelling and pain of the throat, shoulder pain, deafness, yellow eyes, pain of the lateral side of the upper arms. Kidney 3 and bladder 58. Uh, can be used to treat dark complexion with no thirst and a desire to lie down, a decreased vision, a feeling of heat, backache, weakness of lower limbs, shortness of breath, timidity, uh, which literally means heart and dull blood. Um, bladder 64 and kidney 4. Can be used to treat eye pain, neck ache, pain from neck to back of to lower limbs, mania, epilepsy, opistotonus, pain eyebrow region, pain in the eyebrow region, epistaxis, yellow eyes, contraction of tendons, and prolapse and triple burn burner four and and pericardium 6 can be used to treat tinnitus, deafness, swelling of throat, dry throat, swelling of eyes, earache, sweating, pain between scapulae, elbow pain, constipation, incontinence of urine, and retention of urine. Pericardium 7 and triple burner 5 can be used to treat contracture of palms, arm pain, inability to extend arm, fullness of chest, swelling of axilla, palpitations, red face, yellow eyes, 
laughing and crying without reason, mental restlessness, heart pain, and hot palms. Liver 3 and gallbladder 37 can be used to treat abdominal distension and hypogastric swelling in women, chest fullness, vomiting, hernia, urinary retention, or incontinence. Gallbladder 40 and liver 5 are for dull complexion, headache, eye pain, swelling of neck, goiter, hypochondrial pain, swelling and sweating of axilla. The combinations used most are described below with the rele relevant symptoms. LI4 and lung 7 restore the descending of lung chi, expel wind, and treat headaches. Triple burner 4 and pericardium 6 regulate the triple burner, move liver chi, and calm the mind. Spleen 3 and stomach 40 tonify the spleen and resolve phlegm. Liver 3 and gallbladder 37 brighten the eyes in the liver patterns. Bladder 64 and kidney 4 treat sciatica on affected side, kidney 4 on opposite one. So in summary, the combination of source or the U1 points and the connecting or LUO points uh, is mentioned in the Great Compendium of Acupuncture in 1601 as the guest host combination. The source point is taken as the main point to treat affected channel. Example here is lung 9. Connecting point of interiorly, exteriorly related channel is added to reinforce treatment. Example, LI6. Thank you for your attention. Now we continue with the back transporting points, the psychic aspect. The action of these points is stronger if they are combined with the relevant back transporting points of the corresponding yin organ. For example, bladder 23, bladder 52 for the kidneys. So uh, the points, uh, bladder 43 is the back transporting points for the back, for the area between the heart and the diaphragm, which is called Gao, Gao Yang. Wang. However, it is used, its use can only be understood by referring to the other meaning of Gao Huang in a broader sense, also indicates the site of any disease which is chronic and very difficult, if not possible, if not possible to treat. This point is therefore used in very chronic diseases, particularly of the lungs and especially lung yin deficiency. Historically, historically, it was used for tuberculosis of the lungs. Use the, the back transporting points after using and retaining the needles in the front of the body. We have to retain uh, the body points approximately uh, 20 minutes for the adults, then withdraw them. Ask the patient to turn over and then use the back transporting points. Then leave these points in a shorter time uh, that is no longer than 10 minutes in an adult, whether uh, we tonif for tonifying or draining. In order to drain pathogenic factors through these points, use needling to tonify the relevant organs through these points 
We use needling to nourish blood and yin and direct moxacones to tonify qi and yang. For the summary, we have the back transporting points. They are all situated in the bladder channel in the back. Uh, one for each internal organ. It is also affect. It also affect the internal organs directly rather than through their channels. They are particularly important to tonify the yin organs, often used to warm the internal organs, and this is for chronic diseases. It affects relevant sense organ like the bladder 18 for the eyes. It is also used for diagnosis. We check for tenderness on pressure. Taken together with the general concept in diseases of yin, we treat the young. This uh, quotation suggests that the bakshu points should primarily be selected in cases of deficiency and cold which is the yin, and for diseases of the sang, the yin rather than the fu. It is certainly true that the classical indication for these points include many examples of deficiency and cold. For example, we have the bladder 13 for cold lung, lung atrophy, bladder 15 for heart chi, Deficiency in children, frightened and cautious with heart deficiency. Bladder 19 for deficiency taxation. Bladder 20 for spleen chi cold. Bladder 21 stomach cold and feeble. Bladder 23 for kidney deficiency deafness. The five taxations and the seven injuries. Taxation of the five sung. Chronic cold of the water. Kidney sung. However, it is equal true that there are numerous classical indications for excess disorders among the back shoe points. That is, for example, we have the bladder 13 for the fullness of the chest, difficult breathing on lying down. Bladder 14 for oppression of the chest, pain of the chest, and diaphragm due to accumulation of chi. Bladder 18 for pain and distension of the lateral postal region hypogastric fullness and pain, fullness of the chest, much anger, mania, depression, disorder, epilepsy. In current clinical practice, and as far as we know, for a long way back in the historical tradition, Bakshu points had been selected equally for any patterns of their corresponding sang fu, whether hot or cold, excess or deficient, and indeed had been considered vital points for those purposes. However, it is probable that probably true that most practitioners use the bakshu points for the sang more frequently than those of the fu. And this reflects the experience that while the bakshu points of the sang are of fundamental importance clinically, the front move points may be favored for diseases of the foo. Finally, due to the, their location on the bladder channel, the bakshu points while treating the sang foo clearly do not treat channel disorders other than those of the bladder channel. They are, however, indicated in some instances for disorders of the sense uh, sense organ which pertain to the sang fu. Thus, bladder 18 is much used for eye disorders, bladder 23 for ear disorders, bladder 15 for lack of strength in the root of the tongue. Thank you for your attention. Let's now take up the front collecting points, specifically REN14 or the Great Gateway. REN14 is located on the anterior midline to Sun, inferior to the sternocostal angle or sixth Sun, superior to the umbilicus. 
how to find the distance between the sternocostal angle and the center of the umbilicus is divided into a tsun. Note, these are proportional tsun. Renfertin is located on the midline. Two tsun inferior to the sternocostal angle or six tsun superior to the umbilicus. Or we use the spreading hands technique. We place the little fingers on the sternocostal angle and the umbilicus respectively and determine the midpoint of this distance. Then we locate REN12. Then locate REN14 on the midpoint of the distance between REN12 and the sternocostal angle. Located on the same level are kidney 21, which is 0.5 soon lateral to the midline, stomach 19. Stomach 19, which is too soon lateral to the midline, and liver 14, approximately on this level in the sixth intercostal space on the mammillary line. Needling 0.3 to 0.8 soon vertically or often obliquely in an inferior direction or up to 1.5 soon transversely, subcutaneously. Depending on individual anatomy, this point can be located on the siphoid process. Caution, peritoneum, injury to hypertrophied organs, left, the heart, right, the liver, depending on the thickness of the abdominal wall. Actions or indications of REN14 regulates the heart, disperses stagnant phlegm, alleviates pain, and binds the thorax, descends the chi. Harmonizes the stomach, descends stomach chi. Transforms phlegm, calms the shen. Special features, REN14 is front mu point of the heart, major local point for thoracic pain caused by blood stasis or phlegm blockages. REN14 acts on the stomach and on the heart. It subdues rebellious stomach chi in the same way as REN13, and it is ideally indicated for digestive problems, with rebellious stomach chi of an emotional origin as it treats both stomach and heart. However, there is an important difference between these two points. Nausea and vomiting are not always due to rebellious stomach chi, as they may also be due to rebellious heart chi. This happens especially in cases in which nausea and vomiting occur against the background of emotional stress. Renfertin is particularly indicated for nausea and vomiting from rebellious heart chi. Renfertin comes to mind and is frequently used for the pattern of phlegm heat misting the heart and leading to mental symptoms, or for the pattern of heart fire leading to insomnia, agitation, and anxiety. However, this does not mean that Renfertin cannot be used for mental emotional symptoms occurring against the background of heart deficiency. However, in this latter case, tend to use more REN15. The character She in this point's name is the same as that in Shen She for REN8. For this reason, this was translated as palace in accordance with spirit palace of REN8. There is therefore a correspondence between these two points. The spirit or Shen relies on the essence of the kidneys as its foundation. Therefore, REN8 affects the spirit through the essence and REN13 through the mind or shen of the heart. So here we have the locations of both REN14 and REN8. To summarize, REN14 regulates heart chi, so like heart pain, chest pain, phlegm in the chest, fullness of the chest, calms the mind and opens the mind's orifices, anxiety, insomnia, manic depression, shouting, anger, disorientation, agitation. Renfertin subdues rebellious stomach chi, epigastric distension, difficulty in swallowing, nausea, vomiting, SAR regurgitation. Thank you very much for your attention.
uh, let's discuss about the accumulation or C points. Um, for today, we specifically discuss about stomach 34, the rich man, or the young chill. Um, stomach 34 is located on a line joining the lateral patellar border and the anterior superior iliac spine to tune proximal to the upper lateral border of the patella in a groove of the vastus lateralis muscle. How do we locate um, stomach 34? Uh, first, we locate the upper border of the patella and from there measure too soon proximally. Stomach 34 is located in a palpable groove on the vastus lateralis muscle of the quadriceps femoris group. This point projects on the line joining the lateral upper border of the patella and the anterior superior iliac spine. Located on the same level are the points um, XLE1, uh, it's an extra point, each 1.5 soon lateral and medial to stomach 34, and spleen 10, which is located in a comparable position on the medial aspect of the thigh, to soon proximal to the medial upper border of the patella in a groove on the vastus medialis muscle. Needling stomach 34 is done vertically or obliquely at 1 to 1.5 soon depth. As for its actions and indications, stomach 34 regulates the stomach chi, alleviates acute conditions, and opens the channel and alleviates pain. Uh, a special feature at the industry left point, um, it is an important local point for disorders of the knee. In modern application, it, it is used for acute epigastric pain, uh, where, yeah, whereby strongly reducing kneading technique have an immediate and calming effect on the gastrointestinal peristalsis. Here we have an illustration of the points near stomach 34. We have here XLE1 and spleen 10. As an accumulation point, stomach 34 is used for acute, excess, and painful patterns of the stomach. It subdues rebellious stomach chi, causing such symptoms as hiccup, nausea, vomiting, and bulging. It is frequently used in the treatment of painful obstruction syndrome of the knee to expel exterior dampness, wind, and cold from the knee joint. In summary of its functions, uh, stomach 34 as an accumulation point is used for acute, excess, and painful patterns of the stomach. It subdues rebellious stomach chi, where there is hiccup, nausea, vomiting, and vulching. It is frequently used in the treatment of painful obstruction syndrome of the knee to expel exterior dampness, wind, and cold from the knee joint. Stomach 34 is the chic left point of the stomach channel and is the only one of the chic left points of the 12 primary channels which is located proximal to the knee or elbow. It is an important adjacent point in the treatment of knee disorders uh, which is often combined with such points as MNLE16, an extra point, and spleen 10, spleen 9, and gallbladder 34. It's also used for painful obstruction, cold, and pain of the leg. The chic left points are where the chi and blood, which flow relatively superficially along the channels from the genual points, gather and plunge more deeply. The chic left points, in general, are indicated in treatment of acute conditions and pain. The young stomach channel traverses the breasts 
and passes through the nipple. And stomach 34 is classically indicated for such acute disorders of the breasts as swelling, pain, and abscess. In clinical practice, it is also used for acute epigastric pain, although this seems to be a modern rather than traditional usage. Uh, here we have um, some combinations to treat different um, illnesses. So for breast abscess, we can use stomach 34 in combination with gold bladder 42. For contracted sinus with difficulty in flexing and extending the knee and inability to walk, we could combine stomach 34 with liver 8 and gallbladder 33. This is a part of the 1,000 Ducat formulas. Um, in acute epigastric pain, we can combine stomach 36 and stomach 21. For stiffness, soreness, and pain of the knee, we combine stomach 34 with spleen 10 and the extra points uh, CEN or MNLV 16 and GP34 and spleen 9. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Now we continue with the gathering points, the REN17 Chest Center Dung, Dung's Home. The, the location of REN17 is on the anterior midline on the level of the fourth intercostal space. To locate the quick method, especially in men, uh, REN17 is on the sternum between the two nipples, okay? For more detailed orientation on the intercostal region, first locate the monobrius sternal synchondrosis, which can be felt on the sternum as a well-defined horizontal bony structure on the level of the costal cartilage of the second rib. The second intercostal space is below it. From there, count in an inferior direction to the fourth intercostal space uh, to locate REN17 on this level on the midline of the sternum. Locate on the same, same level on the fourth intercostal space are we have the kidney 23, stomach uh, 17, PC1, Spleen 18, GB 22, GB 23. Two tune lateral to the midline on the nipple. One tune lateral to the nipple. Six tune lateral to the midline on the axillary line. One tune anterior to GB 22. So we have that on the illustration on the picture. Okay, so needling, depending on the indication, 0 0.5 to 1 tune traversely, transversely, subcutaneously in a superior or inferior direction or towards the nipple for mammillary disorders. Caution intracardiac needling, pneumothorax. The sternum can be very thin in this area owing to embryonic ossification disorders. Moxibustion is recommended in order to tonify the chi but caution with asthmatic patients. With regards to action and indication, uh, this is for to regulate and benefits the chi, unbinds the chest, descends the counter flow of the lung and stomach chi, benefits the breast. The special features, front move point of the pericardium, meeting point of the spleen, kidney, small intestine, triple burner channel. The we meeting point of the chi, C of G, important point for respiratory disorder. Okay, we have that in here in the picture, in the illustration. REN17 is a very important point to tonify chi. It is both the gathering point for chi and a point of the C of chi. 
It tonifies the chi of the chest and the gathering chi, which is related to heart and lungs. Thus, this point is used to tonify the chi, but only in relation to lung chi, not so much spleen or kidney chi. If the deficiency of chi is due to weakness of the stomach or spleen, this point alone would not be enough to tonify chi, but other points would have to be used, such as stomach 36, REN 12, and REN 6. Besides tonifying chi, it, is, it also moves chi and eliminates stagnation of chi in the chest. It is therefore used in any condition of stagnation of chi in the chest, with such symptoms as feeling of constriction, tightness, oppression, or pain in the chest. REN 17 dispels fullness of the chest, promotes the descending of lung chi, and helps breathing. It is therefore used for, the, for breathlessness from any origin, whether it is from the lung chi or heart chi deficiency or from obstruction of the chest by phlegm. Finally, it benefits the breast and can be used to treat insufficient lactation for both deficiency of chi and blood and from chi stagnation. When used for the breast, REN17 is inserted towards the affected breast. When used for chi, it is inserted horizontally downwards. REN17, the summary of function, uh, tonifies chi and strengthens the gathering chi, the song chi. Uh, for weak voice, tiredness, propensity to catching colds, spontaneous sweating. It also opens the chest, regulates chi, and promotes descending of chi. Chest pain, for wheezing, breathlessness, cough, fullness, and oppression of the chest. It also benefits the breast and promotes lactation, that is for insufficient lactation, breast abscess, breast distension. The REN17 is also known as the upper C of chi and another name for the pericardium. These alternative names reflect the status of REN17 as both the meeting point of chi and the front book point of the pericardium. The term mu means to gather or to collect and the front mu points are whether the chi of the sanku gathers and concentrates on the anterior surface of the body. According to the spiritual five bot, REN17 is the C of Qi, linking with DU14, DU15, uh, stomach 9. So this passage states, when the C of Qi is in excess, there is fullness in the chest, urgent breathing and a red, and a red complexion. When the C of G is deficient, there is scanty energy insufficient for speech. These indications reflect the ability of the REN17 to regulate G in the chest as well as to treat breathlessness with inability to speak. The spiritual pivot says that the gathering G accumulates in the upper C, upper C, which is lower pathway flowing down to stomach 30 and its upper pathway entering the respiratory passage. Located in the center of the chest, REN17 has strong effect on the gathering chi, which in turn oversees both the lung function of dominating chi and controlling respiration and speech, and the heart function of governing the blood and blood vessels. According to the illustration, Illustrated supplement to the classic of categories, REN17 can treat all types of abrising chi and dyspnea. When the lung fails to descend chi and controls respiration, whether due to attack by external pathogens or to interior disharmony, there will be various manifestations of accumulation or rebellion of chi such as cough, dyspnea, wheezing, asthma, and fullness and oppression of the chest. REN17 is an important local point to relieve such accumulation of chi in the chest and to descend rebellion of, chi, of, rebellion of lung chi. When the gathering, gathering chi is deficient, 
then both the lung and heart chi will be deficient. In the lungs, there will be shortness of breath, while if the heart chi fails to move the blood and the blood vessel in the chest, there will be chest painful obstruction. And pain in the heart and chest with fullness and oppression. REN17 is one of the primary points to regulate the gathering chi. The action of REN17 on descending rebell rebellion of chi extends to the middle jaw and it is able to restore harmony to the stomach in cases of difficult ingestion, acid regurgitation, esophageal constriction, and vomiting. Located midway between the breast, REN17 is a principal point in the treatment of insufficient lactation. According to the observation of women by Sang Jing Yu, qi and blood in the conception and penetrating uh, vessels in women transforms into menstrual blood when it descends and into milk when it ascends. Delayed or insufficient production of milk after delivery is due to deficiency of qi and blood. While well, the book of literati care of parents states sobbing, crying, grief, anger, or depression lead to obstruction of the milk passage. These two uh, quotations illustrate the two main patterns underlying insufficient lactation namely uh, deficiency of qi and blood and qi stagnation. In either case, uh, REN17 may be used in combination with other suitable points and is frequently found in combination with small intestine 1 in classical combinations. Similarly, REN17 is often used clinically in the treatment of distension and pain of the breast and breast abscess. Where any of this breast disorder is unilateral, the needle of REN17 may be directed towards the affected side to induce chi sensation into the breast, while if the disorder is bilateral, the needle may be directed first to, the, to one side and then to the other. Thank you for your attention. Let's continue with chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, discussing, we will discuss uh, dampness in the muscles. Case history. We have a 53-year-old woman who complained of exhaustion, muscle fatigue and ache, quivering of the muscles, poor memory and concentration, feeling of muzziness and heaviness of the head and headaches. All this started after a viral infection three years previously. Her pulse was weak and fine, but also slippery, tongue slightly red and swollen, and had a sticky yellow coating. The condition is also due to damp heat remaining after the viral infection. So this is similar to the previous one that we discussed with one difference. This condition is more deficient than the previous one, as evidenced by the weak and fine pulse. Thus, underlining the condition of damp heat, there is a pronounced deficiency of the spleen. However, in spite of this, it is still better to clear the damp heat before tonifying. Treatment principle, the resolve damp heat. Another case history, we have a 33-year-old man who had suffered from exhaustion for the previous four years. He felt especially tired after eating, sweated at night, and his limbs felt heavy tired and achy. He also experienced dull headaches when tired. Tongue was red, swollen, and had a sticky yellow coating. Pulse was weak, but slippery and slightly rapid. All these symptoms had started after a bout of influenza four years previously, from which he had never recovered. This is again a condition of damp heat. In this case, heat is predominant, as evidenced by the red tongue. Principle, clear heat and resolve dampness. So we have here the tongue of the patient, the tongue picture. Uh, we could clearly see that the color is red uh, with a very thick, sticky yellow coating. Another case history, 28-year-old woman 
complaining of total lack of energy, aches, and fatigue of the muscles for the past three months. She also felt cold, thinking was not clear, head felt muzzy and heavy. Glands were swollen, and she suffered from constipation, although this had been a problem for a long time. Stools not dry. She was pale and spoke with a very quiet voice. Tongue pale with teeth marks and had small, white, pin-sized vesicles. Pulse slow, 60 beats per minute. Slippery and weak. All her symptoms, except for the constipation, had started after receiving an influenza immunization. Most of her symptoms are due to dampness without heat, obstructing the head, so we have Mazi and have heavy head, the lack of concentration and clarity, and the muscles, tiredness, ache, and fatigue of the muscles. The pin-sized white vesicles on the tongue are typical of dampness. The residual pathogenic factor in this case followed not an infection, but an immunization, which from a Chinese medical perspective is comparable to an infection. This obviously took place on the background of spleen yang deficiency. This is borne out by her cold feeling, the pale tongue with teeth marks, and the constipation. This was due to spleen yang being unable to move the stools. The fact that the stools are not dry and she does not feel thirsty shows that the constipation is due to yang deficiency and not to heat. It could also have been due to blood deficiency which is a more common cause of chronic constipation in women. But the cold feeling and the tongue point to yang deficiency. Treatment principle, drain the dampness. Acupuncture points, spleen 9, spleen 6, bladder 22, with even method to drain the dampness. We also used LI4, stomach 8, and do 20 with even method to expel dampness from the head. Thank you very much for your attention.